Hey there, biology students. Mr. Mechnick with a quick little podcast on the cross-section of a leaf. So to help you really understand the process of photosynthesis, we need to understand where the magic happens. So this is a cross-sectional view of a leaf. So imagine taking a leaf, slicing it in half, and then magnifying it several thousand times so you could see the cells within that cross section. So this side of the leaf is the upper side of the leaf. You can tell this for a couple different reasons. One, this thin layer on the top of the leaf is called the cuticle. It actually is a waxy covering to prevent water loss from inside the leaf. And then we have the epidermal cells. So these are upper epidermis cells that provide protection and prevent the leaf from drying out. Just inside the epidermis cells are all of the mesophyll. So meso means middle. So these are all the cells that are found in the middle of the leaf and they contain a pigment called chlorophyll. So each one is very important in terms of photosynthesizing. So these palisade mesophyll cells tend to be more elongated and they are really good at absorbing lots and lots of wavelengths from the sun so they can maximize their production of glucose and oxygen. Just inside that are spongy mesophyll cells. Again, there's lots of chloroplasts located in these, but you're going to find that there's gaps in between here. So these gaps in between the spongy mesophyll are important because it helps transport those important gases like, you got it, carbon dioxide and oxygen. So as oxygen is produced by photosynthesis, it has to be able to find its way through the mesophyll and then exit the leaf through this tiny little opening called the stoma. So the, this is just moist air spray space that allows for these gases to be distributed from a higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. So <clears throat> what's interesting about plants is that they have the ability to open and close these tiny little stoma. So the stoma are regulated by guard cells. So in this diagram, these U-shaped cells are the guard cells. So they can expand and contract in response to environmental conditions, either allowing in carbon dioxide or letting out oxygen. And ultimately, plants are photosynthesizing, and they need to bring in lots of carbon dioxide, and they'll make oxygen. But they also need two, or they also need one other very important product. So when plants photosynthesize, they're going to be making sugars. So these sugars that are produced in both the palisade and the spongy mesophyll are going to be transported um, through the plant with their vascular system. So this represents a vein. And in this particular diagram, there's two different colors. Within this vein, there are specialized cells called xylem cells and phloem cells. So in this particular case, you really can't distinguish the difference between xylem and phloem. But one of the things you should know is that xylem cells allow for water to be transported up the stems to the branches, to the leaf, and then to all of these cells. Water will move by capillary action through the xylem into the leaf, travel through moist airspace from high concentration to low concentration by a process called osmosis, and all of a sudden you have plenty of carbon dioxide, you have plenty of water, plants can then do their magic and start pumping out excess oxygen and they're going to make glucose so that glucose can diffuse through membranes back into the vein and then be transported back out of the vein out of the plant to other parts of the plant through the phloem so just remember xylem carries the water up and phloem transports the sugars and nutrients to the rest of the plant so it can grow and develop. So again, little overview of the cross section of a leaf, very important to understand in order to understand the complexity of photosynthesis.